When working in a mobile environment, we want to make sure our images load up and look the best as fast as we can. And so there's a few things what we use to um, enable us to do so, and we call that responsive imagery. And there's a couple of them here I want to show you today. So first off, we have this background image, right? Um, so it's just an image back there, and as I resize, you can see how that resizes with it, right? And again, the way we did that is just by applying um, on our header um, a background image, and then we did this background size cover. And a background size cover is going to make sure that that image is always seen. And then we also did a background position and showed you how to do this in an earlier video that looks at the X, Y axis and kind of focuses on a section of the, the, of the image. You can do a, a center center or 50%, 50%, but when you zoom in and out, um, it will always try to make sure that that center of the image is being made. But we're trying to focus on about 80% of the image so that um, little face of the monkey shows up. And that seems to work really well for a background image. So that's the first thing you can do for responsive images for a background image. Now for a foreground image, uh, for example, not a foreground, but just an image tag, we have these images here. And as you can see, as they go in and out, there is a time where they will resize. And you can kind of see that right there, right? Um, and they are resizing. And so, you know, we're not using image tags or like a height or width on those image tags anymore. What we're doing is um, applying some CSS to it. And so down here below, I have a piece of coding that we've used in a previous video. And what I did is I said, any image that's inside of a div that's inside of my gallery, so any image, you know, specific to this, make the width 100% and the height auto. And what that does is it makes sure that it fills out to its parent. And its parent, in this case, is the div, which is part of a, a subgrid that is resizing. And so no matter if that is on a grid or whatever, um, those images will fill out that space. And so I could take that image and move it around as long as that same CSS applied. You know, if I moved it up here, it would become full screen. Or, you know, I move down and you can see how these become full screen here. Um, but again, very simple way to make your images um, responsive out to the size of their parent. And again, that's using this width 100% and height auto to maintain those ratios. So there's something else I wanted to show um, we can do. There's one tag called the picture tag. And in this picture tag, we have an image, and that's fine. Um, and think of this image more like a fallback image, OK? But we have um, picture tags that are going to you know, surround um, the source tag um, and the image tag. And the source tag basically um, sets um, a media query that if anything's over 800 pixels, um, change the image to something else. And so as I kind of grow that, you can see briefly there where I kind of go a little smaller um, or a little bit bigger where it changes that actual image to different sizes, okay? Um, I've got another example right here um, of this image. Um, we have this image right here of this guy and his little girl. Um, and this image up above, this is probably a good example um, of a nice cover image up here. But you can see this image down here below when I go in and out, it changes the image to a new image and, and um, kind of crops it in. And this works a lot better for more of a mobile format, right? It's kind of taller like that. And so inside of its code, you can see right here where we have the picture tag, right? And we say, OK, we want to have a source. And we say anything that's 799 pixels or less, because it's the maximum width it can ever be seen. So it kind of means 799 and less. Then change the source set to this close portrait. And we get you know, that picture of the little girl and her dad um, zoomed in. And then if we are the minimum width that we ever want this picture to be seen is 800 pixels, which kind of means 800 and above. And then if for whatever reason the browser can't read the source set or the source media queries, then it falls back to the big one of her and her dad and an alt tag with that. So really cool way to feed in multiple images or different images based on the size. Now, 
when you would use this is more for kind of artistic purposes. You want um, it to look a certain way. Maybe your browser is now skinny and you want a taller photo than a really wide photo so you can zoom in and see the picture better. But they're literally different images. Um, you know, we can see these two um, right there and the differences of them both, right? Okay, let's go down to this one. This one is kind of unique and a little bit different. And you can see the code down here, which is a little bit different than the picture tag we used up above. Now, for a long time, I didn't fully understand what this was doing. Um, let me show you something here in network that kind of might help out understand what's happening here. Okay, now what it's doing is it's saying, um, we're going to feed it the image 480w.jpg if the browser width is 480 pixels roughly um, or less. And then we're going to feed it the big picture if it's 800 pixels around that size. And what's happening, um, let me just resize this. Okay. Now do you see when I went bigger over here on the side this AVA 800w was loaded. Now. The point of this is, is we want our websites to be as fast as possible. And if we load our page in a desktop and we need a big image because we need a higher resolution, then we're going to spend the time and we're going to load that image and it's going to cost us a little bit more. But if we load a, a, a page that's small, why load that really big image? You see here when I shrunk down this AVA 480 now showed up. Okay, what's happening is it's making a call out to, to load the smaller one rather than load the big one. As if I had refreshed the page fresh, it won't even try to get the, get the 800. It's going to only load the 480. And the browser does that all automatically. All you have to do is say, this image is 480 pixels wide, so we're going to say 480W. And the browser will look to see when is the best time to pull that image and show it. And it will. And so as I'm kind of going in and out, you can see the 800 loaded or the 480. And it's just loading them up as, as it needs be. So again, the point of this is, is to get the smallest image needed loaded on the screen to really speed up the website because images are what are going to slow things down more than anything else. And this is really an easy way to go about doing that and, uh, and get the image loaded on the page.